Hello guys, today we are playing a 1v1 match upon a beautiful map Danhero in Battle for Middle Earth 1 on a patch 2.22. We are picking random against Last Samurai. And we will get to play with the Gondor faction. Okay, so Gondor against random. I'm gonna try something different uh, because I'm trying to create a new meta in the patch 2.22. Which makes the game, in my opinion, much more balanced. So we're gonna actually open up with a barracks in this game, which will give me a bit more options. Remember, when you don't open with a barracks as the Gondor faction, you have actually not many options because you have only two starting units. And unlike Rohan, Isengard or Mordor, you will not get the chance to recruit any more units anytime soon. So you will have to wait for the stable. And I personally enjoy the barracks opening a lot, which gives, you know, which makes your early game a bit more, um, you know, interactive. Okay, what we're gonna do is we're gonna use the Hobbit and one of the soldier to creep the Goblin Lair. And with the other soldier, we will be... You know, putting pressure on the open end. And we will recruit in total two additional soldiers. This way we can capture the uncaptured settlements. And also put even more pressure. This way we don't have to sit and wait for the for the money for this debuff. Okay, so send in the Hobbit first. Hobbit is actually quite tanky against those Goblin Warriors. They cannot take down the Hobbit quite fast. And once the Hobbit is tanking, we can actually use the Soldier to focus down the Goblin Lair itself. You want to kill the Lairs first. Because if you don't kill the Lairs first, uh, the Goblin Lair or the Vork Lair they will keep spawning more and more units. And uh, that might actually lead you to feel the creeping, which hurts a lot at the beginning of the game. Okay, so let's capture the settlement. And we will be demolishing the barracks after the second Soldier. And trying to save up for the stable. That's gonna be quite nice though. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna cloak the hobbit behind the soldier. This way the soldier is gonna get last hit. That's very important. You need to make sure that your soldier battalions are the ones who are getting the last hit on the lair. This way they will get level 2. And as the hobbit was able to share experience, he's almost level 3 now. Level 2 soldier at the beginning of the game is actually quite impactful. We will not be able to win this fight, but we can actually drag it out. Let's destroy the settlement. And uh, this is a good map for the Mordor faction, so we need to kind of make sure that Mordor is not evolving and getting extremely strong. I think you have seen a couple of times what happens if Mordor gets into the lead game. And hopefully we will be able to de deny that from happening. So I think we need to make sure to rush Gandalf in this matchup, because upgrades are going to be a bit too late. So there is a chance, if you go for the upgrades, that by the time you go for the base rush with your Gondor Knights, he might have a Nazgul on the field, and that's gonna mess you up a lot. Okay, let's capture the settlement. Gollum is actually very annoying. Yeah, we won't be able to finish this off. But we are able to recapture the settlement. That's pretty good. Our Hobbit is level 3. Let's capture this farm as well. So in total, we will have now 4 farms outside on the field, which is pretty good. Because that's gonna give us the food bonus, making our Gondor Knights a bit cheaper. Okay, so we can actually even creep the Vork Lair now, because we have like highly leveled Gondor, uh, Gondor Soldier, plus the highly leveled Peregrine Tuk, the full of a Tuk, as Gandalf would like to call him. We have one power point in the bank. Uh, I'm not gonna go for the Alvin Wood though, because I will need the power points later on for the Gandalf to White. Okay, level 2 soldier, that's pretty good actually. I mean, again, we won't be able to win this fight in long terms because the Mordor player will be able to bring more and more orcs all the time. Remember, orcs are for free in this game. And uh, But the good thing is we can keep him away from our farm. And this way we can keep the farm protected for a longer duration. Unfortunately for us, we were not able to destroy any of his settlements yet. So I'm pretty certain that Mordor is actually quite rich. And for that reason, we need to be, you know, we need to be fast. You need to be... Like, the game is about tempo, and you don't want to waste time. Every second matters, especially against the Mordor faction. Every single second matters a lot. Okay, we can. I want to keep those soldiers alive, the level 4 soldier as well, because this way I can combine them later on with an archer battalion and get this way a level 4 combo battalion, which can actually be quite nice. Remember, the fear effects got improved in the patch 2.22, which is more or less like a direct buff to the Mordor faction. Remember, I mean, in the previous versions, the second you bought banner, oh my goodness, he has already outpost captured. 
The second you bought a banner upgrade on your units, your units would automatically be fear resistant. You know, which would make a Nazgul or a Witch King or Horn of Gondor from Boromir completely useless. But now the fear effects last until your units are level 3. That's why keeping those level 4 soldiers alive is actually essential. I'm gonna actually capture this outpost. This way I can make sure that Mordor is not able to do that. And until we have the money, we can keep the Hobbit at the outpost just to make sure that Mordor is not sneaking in and capturing it. Because with the Haradrims on top of the outpost, it's very hard for us <laughs> to take it down early on. Okay, so we have still a couple of creeps left, which we can creep. Let's go for a juicy trample. Trample, trample. We're gonna heal. Oh, oh my, this ouchie. <laughs> ouchie, this hurts. This actually hurts, boys. Okay, okay, it's not a big deal. We can now creep. Be careful with the soldier. Uh, with the gun knight, I mean. We have a lot of money. Let's capture this. We need to build a well, a statue, and the archer range at the outpost we just captured. Okay, so st statue behind. It's very important. You don't want to build a statue in the front because it will be easier to be destroyed from your opponent. And we need to build a well now for the recovery. Okay, so let's creep this work layer in the meantime. And there is another work layer. So the good thing is we have actually lots of creeps, which is going to be good. When you play as Gondor against Mordor, um, what you are aiming for is to get to the point in which you can finally call on the eagles. That's very important because Mordor will have a rough time to deal with your eagles. So even though it looks good for us, look at the amount of map control we get. But still, you know, Mordor is an outpost with an um, untied settlement behind the castle. So Mordor is growing rich slowly but surely. And there is nothing I can do. I will also recruit Boromir um, and creep the troll there. This way I can get Boromir to level 4. Later on, we might also need to build the marketplace to get even more money. So, marketplace is a structure from the Gondor faction you want to build when you have actually great amount of map control. This is going to be the time for you to shine bright like a diamond. Then your eco is going to go crazy and you can afford making mistakes. Okay, we have a level 4, you know, combat battalion, but he has, like, orcs they are annoying to deal with. Like, they are not hard to deal with, don't get me wrong. But they are annoying, because he doesn't lose anything of that. Remember, they cost nothing but command points only. Okay. The money is looking good. We are getting closer to the point in which we can summon the mightiest hero in the game, which is, of course... Gun of the Grey, I'm joking. Gun of the Grey is actually a joke. <laughs> we need to recruit Gun of the White. Oh, he has still not crapped the Goblin Layers. Okay. Boromir can solo the Troll Layer. I mean, Boromir is actually one of the few heroes that can do that as a melee hero. I mean, Lords can do that with Carnage, but without Carnage, it's not possible. The Trolls, I mean, the Layers in BFME 1 are actually quite uh, effective. Oh no, <laughs> he captured this outpost. This guy is annoying. Okay, I mean, we have a lot of power points. We might also need to pick up the Elvin Wood later once we get Gandalf on the field. At this point, it's about saving for Gandalf. That's very important. Uh, that's, that's bad, boys. We lost the last hit on the lair. That's unfortunate. But luckily, there is another trolley at the bottom right corner. Nobody knows about this. Nobody cares about this because it protects nothing, right? Also, this troll layer protects nothing, but these maps are not from the patch 2.22. We've actually also added a new map um, in the newest version, which was released two days ago, just in case you haven't downloaded it yet. What you can do always is you can open your BFME launcher, and when the update button is blinking, just click on it, and this way you can always be up to date with the most recent version of the patch 2.22. We have now uh, also new level up animations for the heroes. Good heroes, they will now glow blue. And evil heroes gonna blow, uh, glow, glow, not blow, <laughs> glow red. You know? Looks pretty epic though. Especially the evil faction heroes. When they level up, the animation looks pretty nice. It's my favorite. Hopefully you guys also will enjoy this. And obviously the patch 2.22 we are working on. I'm not working on it alone. Um, we want to keep improving the gameplay as much as we can. I think the BFME games, they deserve more love. And as there is no company behind these games, we need to be behind these games, you know? I don't want these games to be dead. And very soon I will have a son. He's gonna be born in July, so in two months from now. 
two and a half months from now, and I will have to teach him to play Battle for Middle Earth so he can replace me in the future. <laughs> like, it's gonna be like a family generation kind of thing, you know? We will not let Battle for Middle Earth games die, guys. Trust me on that one. And for me, it's not understandable. How can a company abandon such a great game, dude? It doesn't make any sense to me. It's so unique, you know what I'm saying? From all the RTS games, I mean, Age of Mythology is also one of my favorite games, but Battle for Middle-Earth, like a RTS games based on the best films in the universe, the Lord of the Rings trilogy, how can you abandon this? Let's capture this outpost too. We can build additional settlements. Now we have fire arrows on the combos. And we can start actually sieging. Look, he has lots of orcs. <laughs> you know, the, the, man, the age of man is over. The age of the orc has come. But remember in Battle for Middle Earth 1, it goes quality over quantity. It means even though he is outnumbering us big time, we have a uh, higher quality. We have Boromir leadership. We have Faramir not leadership yet, but he will also get the chance to show his quality in this game. And we have also Gandalf leadership. So basically, we have now more DPS and more armor. And also fire arrows, which means even more DPS. There is a Witch King, we need to kind of burst him down. Attack him, attack him, attack him. Use warning arrow, please. Oh, I'm so slow. I could have killed him, by the way. If I would hit the warning arrow, he would have... He would have ah, I can't even talk. He would have been dead. Big commitment. I'm going to go for a juicy Visa Plus here. Go, Gandalf. Show your quality, Gandalf. Yeah. Okay, we got a bail. Luckily, we have an outpost. That's why it's important to have those outposts. You know what I'm saying? Because every time you take a fight and the fight doesn't go well for you, then you can just peel back, heal up to full HP once again, and then use the cooldowns. So now we know that his Witch King is damaged. And also, he has Eye of Sauron on cooldown for the next big fight. And he has an outpost at the bottom side as well. I want to take care of this outpost, this outpost here, and also the other outpost. Like, we need to kind of you know, take off his arm, because we can't go for the head yet. I know Thanos was saying to Thor, <laughs> you should have gone for the head, but I, we cannot go for the head yet. We need to play it slow and smart. Mistakes can actually be big punishment. Remember the, the games a couple of days ago? I was making a mistake losing my Gandalf and giving Mordor the chance to run me down. And we don't want this to happen, boys. We don't want this to happen. He has industry on. And he will have also potentially some catapults very soon. I see runes. Yeah, he has catapults indeed. And how we want to reach out to this catapult though? That's the big question. He has so many runes on the field. The Pikeman of Mordor faction. I'm actually surprised that this Mordor is not going for trolls. I mean, let's be honest. Trolls, um, they are very strong with Darkness and Witch King. But without that, without Drummer Troll, they would have no chance against my Boromir and my combos. And because one of my combos is level 4... Or level 5. So hitting like a truck. I want to go also for the Grand Harvest. And then the Iron Ore right after. Means more money. 40% more money. It's actually huge. Okay, we need to kind of make sure to this. Oh, hold on a second. I'm going to call on the Rangers. And try to... Uh, the Fear effect doesn't work when Gandalf is around. And also the Gondor Knights are level 5. They won't get feared anyway. So that's going to be enough to not kill the Witch King. But to force him to retreat. That's pretty good because now I can take down the outpost and get one ranger inside. So what you can do with the factions, you can capture the outpost and then place an archer inside the outpost. Let's go for iron ore for even more money from the blacksmiths this time. Blacksmiths are essential, the primary resource building for the gun faction. You want to have six of them, but you don't want to have more than six because they are more expensive than farms. Oh, he's coming, boys. The catapults, though, they are hitting so hard, dude. Holy, do you see this damage, dude? Like, almost one shot my full combo battalion. Level 5, by the way. With leadership. Dude, uh, that's painful. That's really painful, guys. Okay, we killed it. You see this blue level up animation from Faramir? As he's showing his quality. That's pretty nice. We have the bottom side now fully under our control. That's pretty good. And what we need to try to do is we gotta try to actually go for this um, outpost. I think going for the main base... When he has that much supply from the outpost near to his base, he's not going to be efficient enough unless we can finish him, which I doubt. I don't think we can finish him yet. I want to actually take down this outpost first. Oh, what a timing, dude. My rangers, they are timed. Just 
you know, they faded away, boys. They faded away. Can I use this? Oh, he's paying attention. I will, ah, I will miss the lightning sword, unfortunately. But it is how it is, boys. It's not a big deal. I think we are still in a good spot. We have lots of money. I'm pretty tempted to also build up later on the storm worker. You know, I'm regretting it that I didn't build it at a game. I'm a, I'm a person I don't want to win with Leeming. And I, for me personally, building a storm worker, even though it's like a generic building from the Gondor faction, feels like lame. But it's always good to hope for the best, but be prepared for the wars. And I don't want to be losing this game from a winning position. And that happened to me mo more than you think against Mordor. Like, only, only against Mordor. Mordor is like my kryptonite. And uh, I have, like, very big weaknesses against the Mordor faction. Because the flying heroes, they are so painful to deal with. Like, remember, Mordor has the chance to recruit three of them. Two Nazgûls and the Witch King. And, uh, <laughs> dude... I, I need to sacrifice my units. And look at this. The catapult is going to be able to survive this too, man. This is so annoying. Look at this catapult shots. Holy guacamole, guys. Okay, we need to... We must stop attacking his castle. We need to actually go around the castle and take down the outpost. Because the outpost is so close to his base. Then we can start sieging from there. Like, we have a lot of DPS power. But we are actually quite squishy against catapults. The combos, they are also very immobile. And dodging the shots is not <laughs> easy with the Gondor combos. Rangers are, are a bit more agile, a bit more faster. But yeah, let's see. Let's go around it now. I think it's time for the Storm Worker too. <laughs> you know, uh, we gotta be prepared for the worst case scenario, boys. Let's go for the Storm Worker. Yes, sir. Okay, so go around now. Go around. That's a huge army, though, of the Gondor, of the White City boys. Okay, outpost, I'm coming. So, unfortunately, Faram... Hey, we can also garrison those towers, guys. We have two rangers, we can put them inside. Oh, that was a bad call from you, my friend, to build the troll cage on the spot. The catapults are moving, but we can take care of them now. They are actually not defended. Um, the Nazgûls are going to try to defend this, but we can place the ranges inside of that. And you can always try to snipe a Nazgûl. You see the blue level up animation, dude, that looks juicy. I like this. Okay, these runes, they are trying to body block for the Gondonites, but they are level, what, 8? 9? Oh, actually, that's a very good spot for us, because look where the Siege Works is at. The second we destroy the outpost, we can also go for the Siege Works. Warning out of Faramir. Faramir is showing his quality. Yes, sir. Faramir, the quality shower, guys. Holy moly. That's nice. So we need to try to kill this catapult. The second we are done with that. And he will have no trolls anytime soon. He actually went for the combos in catapults plus Nazgul and Witch King. But you need trolls with Mordor. You need, at bare minimum, the drummer troll leadership. That's very important if you want to be actually able to contest. And you know what time it is, right? You know what time it is? Oh, 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 Gandalf. Gandalf, do it. Boom, son of your face. Oh, look. Do it. Calculate it. Calculate it, guys. I'm telling you. Oh, my goodness, dude. The, <laughs> the Age of Mythology soundtrack in the background, too, motivates me. Prostagma volume. Look at this range's inside. Parami is also leadership now. We have maximum leadership. You cannot get stronger with the Gondor faction anymore. Oh, Witch King! Faramir? Oh, Faramir doesn't get... Oh, overkill for the warning arrow. <laughs> overkill. But it's a perfect situation for us. Like, the second we deal with the catapults... Look, the power points. I'm gonna actually skip them. I'm gonna go for the Cloud Break. Let's use Cloud Break because I don't like the darkness. You know what I'm saying? I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a human and not an orc. Oh, man. These catapults are annoying. Don't lose the level 10, please. Let's recover a little bit. He has only one single mountain troll. What can this one troll do against such a reckless hit? Our money. Look at this money, dude. We have over 10k already, dude. How is this... What? How is this possible? I mean, I know how it's possible. It's like investment into the late game. Marketplace is underrated. It's actually very worth it. I mean, it's not worth it if you actually have, like, no money, you know? But if you have map control, it's so good to have like an additional resource income just in case you might lose everything and you might be forced to revive heroes and remake armies. 
Okay, so let's kill the Siege Forex. It means no more catapults anytime soon for the model player. And now we can just go in, I think. Like, we killed this Witch King, we killed this Nazgul. Remember, you can revive them for free, but they have, like, a really long revive time. And until this is gonna happen, we, uh, they won't come on the field anytime soon. We will kill this Baradur inside the Mora Castle. And he will not be able to revive his heroes anytime soon. Okay, so look, dude. Holy moly, guys. Full map control. He has only one single settlement left. I think that's the way you want to play against Mortal. You want to be patient. The reason why I lost the other game is I think I was losing my patience in trying to go to force a play, which was not the right call, and giving him the chance to come back. He's saying, be right back. <laughs> there is no be right back anymore. When you come back, my friend, your fortress is going to fall into darkness. The blue up, the blue level up animation, guys. Oh my goodness. Okay, guys, GG well played. I think that's the way you want to play against Mordor. This Mordor played, could play it a bit better, but I, but I think we did a good job to shut him down. And capturing the outpost offensively, getting those soldiers to level 4, getting a combo earlier on, and actually blocking the right side of the map was actually the, the way to play this off. And just like in the films, the good, fa the good faction will always win. And this time, Gondor wins even without the help of the Rohan faction, and without the help of the army of the dead. Faramir showing his quality. I want to get Boromir level 7 for use his ability. For Gondor, for the White City. GG well played, guys. I hope you enjoyed this one. If you did, please don't forget to leave a like and subscribe for more videos like this in the future. I will see you next time. Until then, take care of yourselves. Keep hitting like a truck. And as always, stay beyond standards. Peace out.